Excel 2020 Best Tips and Tricks. This is a recap of the best Excel tips and tricks released for most users in 2020. You'll have all these features if you use the subscription-based version of Microsoft 365 Excel and have updated to the latest release. If you are on a slow release channel, you may still have to wait a few more months for some of these though. Let's take a look. Number one, XLOOKUP. XLOOKUP is a great new function that was added technically in the latter part of 2019, but became available for most people in 2020. It works like this. If you do XLOOKUP of the name John in this list of names, and you want it to return the January total, it finds 17,498, which is the total for January for John. The nice thing about XLOOKUP is not only does it do vertical lookups like the VLOOKUP command, but we can look up things horizontally. So let's say we want to find the month of February in this list and return the value for Karen. It finds 17,834, which is Karen's total for February. Now another thing we can do with XLOOKUP is use some of the additional parameters. For example, let's find the discount in this list of discounts and we'll return the region. Well it doesn't find that value because 46% is not in this list. So instead of NA, let's put in the next parameter which is if it's not found, let's have it insert zero. And if you go to the parameter after that, it gives you an option to do an exact match or next smaller or next larger item. So let's find the next smaller item and that would be 45% so it returns region 3. If you want to see more details on how XLOOKUP works, take a look at my XLOOKUP video, and I'll put a link in the description below this one. Number two, LET. The LET function was added mid-year 2020, and it allows you to assign a variable to a portion of a formula to reduce its complexity and potentially speed up the calculation. And as an example, let's say we have a column of three numbers, A, B, and C, and we want to do this formula, A3 times B3 divided by C3 times 25%. Now let's use that formula in an if statement so that we can assign 10, 20, 30, or 40 based on the results of that formula. Well, you can see in here that I'm repeating that same formula multiple times to do that comparison. We can substitute a variable for that. First thing you need to do is put in the let function and it asks for a name. We're going to call this var for a variable. And the name value is going to be the portion of the formula that we're going to substitute, which is A3 times B3 divided by C3 times 25%. Now it wants the calculation. Well, that's the actual formula. But now we can take our variable and put that in place of where the formula is. And at the end, let's make sure to put an in parenthesis for the let function, and it still calculates the same results. We'll copy that down. And as you can see, it's a much smaller formula and much easier to understand. That is the let function. Number three, dynamic array functions. Microsoft added six new dynamic array functions to Excel. They are unique, filter, sort, sort by, sequence, and rand array. What's interesting about dynamic array functions is that when there are multiple results, it spills the data over into the adjacent cells. For example, let's take the unique of this range of names. What it does is it determines all the unique names in that list and it spills those values over into all the cells. The first cell contains the formula and the additional cells have a shaded version of that formula. You can now reference each one of these individual cells and the value contained in it. This is why it's considered dynamic. Taking a look at filter, let's do a filter on this range. And let's select where this set of data equals east. It selects all of that data for only the east region. Each one of these dynamic array functions serves a different purpose. If you want to look at them in more detail, take a look at my dynamic array formulas video, and I'll put a link in the description below this video. Number four, linked data types. 
Microsoft added data types to Excel. They're available under the Data tab in this category for data types. And when you hit the down arrow, you can see a number of them are in preview, and there are some existing ones already implemented. The way data types works is you can get a set of data, highlight it, and then select the data type associated, in this case, geography. It adds a show card symbol, and it also creates a symbol for geography next to the data that you've selected. When you hit this button, it brings up data elements that you can add to your spreadsheet. For example, let's put in the population. And it provides the population for all of those states. You can also reference these data types in a cell. For example, let's take a look at Oregon's largest city. And you see that it added a period and the field name. Hit enter, and now you have Portland is the largest city in Oregon. I can now reference that one and see what the population is in Portland. All of these data types reference information from the web. And if you go down to the bottom of the data set, you'll see that the data is coming from these various locations. So you're leveraging data elements from the web into your spreadsheet without having to create a detailed list of data elements yourself. And if you want to see more detailed information about linked data types, make sure to check out my data types video. I'll put a link in the description. Number five, analyze data. Off the home tab, there's an option here called analyze data. If you click inside of a table of data and then select analyze data from the menu, it brings up this window where you can select from predefined tables and graphs of your data. Analyze data isn't new. It used to be called ideas, but one thing that is new for 2020 is the natural query language portion of this analyze data. You can put in here text of what you want to ask questions about your data. For example, let's show the total sales by product and it provides a graph of that data. You can also do things like, what is the average rating for product socks? And it calculates the average rating based on your text. The natural query language is a very interesting way of analyzing your data just by asking simple questions. Excel does a good job of analyzing the questions that you're asking and breaking it down into different components and providing tables and graphs of that information. If you want a little bit more detail about the natural query language portion of Analyze Data, take a look at my video on natural query language. I'll put a link in the description. Number six, premium content. If you go to the Insert tab, Pictures, there's an option here for stock images. Here you'll find images, icons, cutout people, stickers, and illustrations. This premium content is made available by Microsoft for you to use anywhere in your spreadsheet. Here you can choose a different category as you're looking for different images, or you can type something in the search, such as sunrise. When you find the image that you like, select it, and you can insert that into your spreadsheet. Here you can resize it, remove the background, do corrections and other edits, just like any other picture. Microsoft provides all of this premium content as royalty free for use anywhere you want. And it's a great addition for 2020. Number seven, Lambda. Lambda is a function that helps you create your own functions. It's technically in beta at the end of 2020, so this is more like a preview of what's coming soon. I have a formula right here to calculate the volume of a cylinder. It's pi times the radius squared times the height and I created a table with some radius and height values, and I've calculated the volume by putting in the formula here. But let's say we want to create a function of our own that calculates the volume of that cylinder. That's where Lambda comes in. If you go to the Formulas tab, click on Name Manager, and we're going to create a new name. Let's call this Cylinder Volume, and we're going to put in Lambda, the function lambda has multiple parameter values that you put in. The first thing you want to do is start with the variables that you're going to use in the formula. So we're using the row and the height, so I'm going to use R and H. The next parameter is the actual formula, and now we're going to use R and H in that formula. So our volume formula is pi times R squared 
times h. So I'm going to take pi times r squared times h in parentheses. And that is everything you need to do to pass the radius and height into this lambda function and calculate that formula based on those values. Hit OK. It creates a new name called cylinder volume and I can close that. Now I'm going to type in cylinder volume. That's our new function and we're passing two variables in the radius and the height. And there you go. This new function we created can now be used anywhere in an Excel spreadsheet and it saves with your spreadsheet so that it's available the next time you open it. I can now copy it around just like I do any other formula and I'm sure I'll cover this in more detail in a future video. And that's Excel 2020 best tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up and leave a comment. I really do appreciate your support.